Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us again on the weekly Telefriend Cryptocurrency News Channel, where we have various uh, guest speakers and we talk about all kinds of topics of what's going on around the world, the elections, cryptos, um, and how crypto is just being adopted more and more. And today we've got a very special guest, uh, Jason Butcher. CEO of Coin Payments and founder of numerous payment and fintech companies. On top of that, he's also an advisor to and board member on a number of fintech businesses. So, Jason, thank you very much for joining us today. Looking forward to hear what your take is on cryptocurrencies as payment method in business, the business world. Um, we've seen more and more platforms uh, busy, basically moving away from traditional money and moving into the cryptocurrency era, which is exciting. Uh, the latest news with PayPal this week, that some good, good movements in the cryptocurrency world for us. So Jason, yes, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us um, and share your thoughts on cryptocurrencies. Really looking forward to hearing what you've got to say. And I'm just gonna stop my screen share so that we can see you when you do talk and then i am gonna ask you a couple of questions so jason welcome good morning how's, how's everybody doing good morning evening afternoon i guess it looks like uh, quite a few people from all over the world so it's great all over great the show party. yeah all over the show so jason a quick introduction um i think there's too many things to say or tell people who you are and what you do and all those kind of things. So if I've missed something that's important, please feel free to uh, uh, share it with the people. But my first sure. question is, why do you think blockchain is so slow today? Um, I don't know if anybody else has noticed it, but transactions is taking forever to move through the blockchain today. Um, it's not. Well, really I guess. <laughs> I guess it depends on which blockchain at first. Yeah. Um, but you, but you're right. We. Uh, we we tend to find that the the most challenging, at least more from a customer support standpoint, because as as much as people are expecting or thinking that um, blockchain transactions are supposed to be very quick, um, the the customer support side of our business tends to be mostly held up with people saying their transactions haven't happened or they're still waiting and uh, feeling that it's, it's, it's perhaps our, our problems or our platforms and stuff like that. And I, and I'd say that that's probably our, our, our biggest customer support challenge. Um, mm. will it, will it in, improve? I, I believe so. I, I believe that it, in essence for adoption to, to happen, it needs to fulfill what, what the needs are and, you know, need people's needs today um are completely different than they were you know a couple of years ago and, and and that's because of people's adoption but it's also because i think it's it's where people's expectations are um mm, exactly so so expectations are well it, it's supposed to happen instantly so why isn't it happening instantly and and yet and yet a few months ago if it happened in an hour everything was totally fine right so um i think people's best best and worst uh uh, desires are happening. Well, it's supposed to be instant. It's everybody's yeah. there now, and now it's not instant. So, uh, what do we do about it? And and that's just technology, right? Innovation and things will continually change and adapt. And maybe certain blockchains will be used more for actual transactions. Uh, we see those things shifting ourselves, where you know we had a, a major percentage of transactions happening on one blockchain, and now we're seeing a shift to different blockchains. So yeah. I think that'll, that'll happen and it'll, it'll work itself through. Um, I, I suppose that ties in with why Ethereum uh, gas fees all of a sudden went through the roof. Um, if you pay with Ethereum or whatever, the gas fees is ridiculously high all of a sudden. Uh, right. And I, I don't know if you've experienced that on coin payments where people are not using the ERC anymore, 20 as much anymore. They're actually removing Ethereum as a payment option. Well, you know, the, the thing is, is um, if for us, we deal with, with the payment side, both the, the, the sides from where somebody's receiving the payment, as well as somebody who's sort of sending that payment out to a conversion to say a, 
another coin or to another fiat or something else. And mm. what we see is definitely less people are making payments in its, in its ERC tokens. Yeah. So if, it, and, and that's, that, that just means that maybe somebody is paying less in it that, that doesn't have the desire to have it, or maybe they just don't have the actual coins. So the, the decrease in payments are happening and, and it's, Definitely, we're seeing less and less. At the same time, we're seeing more and more uh, transactions and more and more interest in stable coins. Okay, that's interesting. Stable coins like the USDT or BNBs or no, BNB is not a stable coin. It's more than well, US, USDT, yeah. USDT for sure. Uh, I mean, we used to be a few percent. Now we're getting up to ten or fifteen percent in just the last this last uh, half a year or a year. So it's a, sure. it's a pretty significant increase in our, the number of percentages of transactions that are happening. Now, reading your resume or looking at your profile, online profile, um, you've done quite substantial work in the fintech and uh, fiat payment, payment gateways world. Why cryptocurrency? Yeah. Why jump into cryptocurrency? Well, I mean, I guess this is sounds, uh, it sounds interesting for people here, but I mean, I, I'm honestly payment agnostic. Um, so as much as I, I, we support cryptocurrency today and coin payments is really in my main business, the, the method of exchange of value, I think is the most critical, most important piece and, and global transactions. So, mm -hmm. so today, you know, um, if, it, if you go back a number of years ago, you could see barter, right? As an example, the barter technology industry in space was where somebody was exchanging services or products of value and they were trading between each other. Most of those transactions were recorded on like Excel documents. It was a ledger of format, right? It was a ledger of transfer, demonstrated that this person traded with this person. Today, cryptocurrencies in certain ways are representing that same kind of thing where they're representing a store value trading between two individuals or between a group of people that are all supporting each other within that, that exchange or that, that value exchange. So if you look at the 450 different types of styles of payments today, um, you've got everything from the ACH networks to the wire systems, to SWIFT, to, to SEPAs, to faster networks, to uh, all of the hundreds and hundreds of different wallets that are out there, the Skrills, the net tellers, which are really closed loop platforms there, there are the, the telephone companies that are switching before 18 years mm. ago, the Philippines started transferring value between each other on a, on dumb telephones, right? It was yeah. a digital transfer of value between a cell phone and a cell phone. So around the world, different types of payments methodologies have supported different communities and the needs of those communities. Credit cards, for example, isn't a credit card. It's a distribution network. It's a method of transfer of value. The record of that throughout that value is recorded in a, in a record somewhere, mm -hmm. right? So in my mind, I look at crypto as, as, as a method of distribution and method of, of record. And of course you have blockchains, which are really different to me than a cryptocurrency. Right, you have a, a blockchain that's recording a distribution of products from from point of creation to the delivery point, and all of the the points in, in the middle of that, which is a blockchain, is record of of distribution, right? Yeah. And you have the cryptocurrency side, which is which is the exchange of that value. It's the end point of what you're actually getting. It's the outcome. So I th I, I look at the entire global uh, sphere of payments or record of exchange and. Um, crypto, we, within our platform and our wallet, we support over 1900 cryptocurrencies. Um, but we see where all the transactions happen, right? Mm -hmm. So definitely people are holding crazy coins, <laughs> you know, that, that may represent, they have, uh, you know, a billion dollars, but, but there's no trading. There's no actual value that's really there to be able to exchange. Um, but then there's. You know, we're, we're transacting about $300 million a month in cryptocurrency transactions uh, every month. And in that, and in that process, we see that about 80%, 85% of that is Bitcoin transactions, which to me tells me that, well, those are the people who have Bitcoin who are wanting to trade the value that they have stored. Now they may prefer to actually hold that Bitcoin maybe because of speculation or it's qual it's, it's the, what is they call the, the, Bitcoin is gold, right? Yeah. So 
but that's what they have. And people tend to spend what they have or they spend to have what they don't have, like on credit cards. If a, if a bank's issued a person a credit card, it's money they don't have. So they're most likely gonna spend that, right? Yeah. But they're gonna spend it on buying Bitcoin so that they hopefully increase the value or the money they have to pay off their credit card or, or to have more money. So just like some people in, in certain areas that we know are buying crypto to hopefully have more money than they had prior. So their currency is decreasing in value. They feel that they're hedging or they're, they're speculating around the value of, of crypto. And we see a lot of people buying. You, you mentioned uh, the PayPal's and, and, and the likes mm -hmm. of PayPal's, the squares and the stripes and the other areas that are all starting to come into allowing people to buy crypto. And in essence, that's where they're starting, right? They're starting with allowing them to buy crypto within their wallet. That's a, do you think that doing that or platforms like that is moving that direction because uh, there's a bigger adoption in the cryptocurrency space? And in the same, same question, that is why more businesses should already be busy with looking at accepting cryptocurrency as a payment method. Yeah, well, I guess in, in my view, a couple of years ago, I, I pretty much told my partners at, at Coin Payments that, that I felt that within two years, we're going to see every single, every payment system out there, every payment processor like the PayPal's, the Squares, et cetera, will be accepting uh, crypto as a form of payment and or at least supporting crypto. And, and that's a few things. One is FATF uh, came out with their rules and regulations guidance uh, last year. And you see the, the regulators and the regulations globally supporting crypto as a, as a, as an asset. Some are, you know, some say it's a commodity, some say it's a fiat mm -hmm. and some are, are financial currency. Some people say, you know, slightly different and essentially payment service providers are banks, right? We yeah. have licenses to provide financial services. We provide, so therefore we have to follow regulations. And as regulations came out, you could you could tell where these things were going to come into place. So, um, in my view, every single merchant should accept crypto as a form of payment. If you if you're a merchant and you don't accept Visa, Mastercard, Visa and Mastercard, yeah. and or Amex and or another payment method, you're losing. You're potentially losing out in the in the ability to, to accept that payment. Exactly. Right. In crypto, it removes the elements of chargebacks and fraud and a number of elements that that are just challenged by uh, merchants that are accepting Visa MasterCard. You know, I, I know groups that are accepting, they only accept Visa MasterCard. They deal with paying thousands and thousands of dollars a month, every single month to the lawyers to fight their guys that are causing fraud and saying, oh, I, I, I bought the product, but I don't want the product anymore, mm. but I'm going to keep it, but I want my money back. So they, they, they uh, phone their Visa and MasterCard guys and say, hey, I didn't mean to make this purchase, right? Sure. And, and it's, 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 it's- Yeah, so just on that uh, topic with uh, the adoption and the different payment methods, why do you think the banks are kicking against this? Obviously, I think there's a logical reason, but from your take on the crypto side, if platforms like yourself, PayPal, and all the others that you've mentioned earlier, starting to adopt cryptocurrencies in conjunction with fiat, but the banks, are not yet uh, there. They, uh, I know in South Africa, especially, we've got one prominent bank who is total anti-crypto and they refuse to work with crypto or allow their customers even to work with crypto. Sure, well, I, I mean, I guess you could, I can't necessarily speak to every bank around the world as, as many banks are being challenged by their own, you know, operational costs and, mm. and regulatory frameworks and and other things. and and not to say anything negative about a bank because a bank, you know, to be honest, many banks fin that are fintech orientated or very creative technology wise, you know, they're, they've been leaders in this space, right? Mm. Um, in different things from, from creating new online banking systems to creating wallet platforms and systems that are out there, maybe not so much focused on the crypto side, but I think those are, again, is the regulatory frameworks that the banks have to work around. Yeah. And their compliance officers that in essence make the decisions at the bank as to the type of business they accept. You know, m many years ago, there was, um, there was the industry of like the online gambling, right? And online gambling 
it, it happens around the world. There's regulations around it. There's license around it. There's some places that accept it. Some people do not. And if you go to the UK and Europe, most of the banks support online gambling, mm, right? And they exactly. support it by banking. They support it by license transactions. They support it by things. Visa MasterCard supports it. You go to other markets and other world, other places in the world, and they don't because of the regulatory framework and their compliance officers who are running those banks just don't want to support it because they don't want to have to deal with the work. Mm -hmm. So crypto is the same way. I have tons of banks that I work with around the world that support crypto, right? And the, those banks are the ones that are, Hey, we're creative. We understand we're adaptive. We've got different mindsets. We have different leadership. We can work around rules and regulations that support the business and we can be compliant. And it all comes down to the compliance side. I give you an example. A couple of years ago, my entire team, I said, guys, I mean, this is three years now, we have to be compliant. What? What do you mean compliant? This is an unregulated, decentralized, we're going to fight the regulations. I said, no, we're not. This is not how it's going to work. Like, we're going to have... We're going to have KYC. What? What? No, no, no. We're going to lose all our business. We're going to, well, we've tripled our business since that time, right? Because we went to KYC, we became regulated. We became following best practices for KYC mm. and AML and transaction monitoring. And yes, there are some people who may not necessarily decide to work with us because, but those are the kind of guys we don't want to work with. Yeah. Yeah, those are normally the kind of guys that will that's in it for the buck. Um, I spoke to somebody earlier about an ICO that we're running, and uh, they are what's what's what problem is the ICO solving? Because many of these cryptos or these ICOs are just grabbing money uh, from the, the the investors who don't understand the token or the ICO or whatever the case is. Uh, and it was we we saw that with uh, when was it last year or two years ago when the ICOs flared up. And I think that damaged a little bit put the crypto. That was just my take. Put crypto a bit backwards uh, with people well, promising lots of stuff and never delivering. Well, do, well you know, um, I, I go back, I, I go back a long ways in the internet space from the early 90s. And we developed a platform called WSN, the World Shopping Network in 1993. And we had our own digital currency. We had what internet is today, video, <laughs> products, sales, tools, everything, everything that you think of what is online today, we had. Yeah. And a few years later, people were out raising hundreds of millions of dollars for concepts and ideas were just stupid. Yeah. Now the concepts and ideas that we thought were stupid were, were still, they, they helped lead new innovation. They helped lead direction. We saw that nobody was online. We saw nobody was interested in signing up. People didn't have internet access. They didn't have broadband. They didn't have digital compression. There was no possibility of this happening yeah. over the internet. Maybe it happens in your office, but hey, why do you need video broadcasting in your office when you're sitting in front of everybody? Um, but then without people going to raise these billions of dollars and many of them scams, mm. many of them people promoting and pumping and dumping and doing this and doing this. And we had this massive market collapse in 2000, you know, the, the yeah. 2000 area mark was in essence, sort of like the ICO stage, right? The ICO stage had a massive amount of promoters come in, create a whole bunch of liquidity or a whole bunch of stuff that were being liquid, liquidated or promoted or pumped or dumped, whatever you want to call it. But the fact is, is without that it wouldn't have supported the industry with creating new innovation supporting new ideas, supporting new concepts. Yeah. So as much as it was, it was challenging, it's also one of those things that was almost, almost needed in a way. If I, sure, you can see it in every single stock market that there is. There's a sub stock market in every, almost everywhere around the world. In the US it's called the OTC. Yeah. Pumps and dumps and promotions all the time. Not real things that are that, there, but it creates new innovation. It funds new ideas and new concepts. So, Yes, the ICO market was a bit of a challenge for the industry, but without it, it probably wouldn't have created the regulations. It wouldn't have supported and pushed people to actually find new ways around the ideas that were happening at the time. And, and today, I think it's it's been beneficial, much more beneficial than it was bad. 
Yeah, no, that's that's a very interesting way of looking at it. And I, I can actually agree with you there. So now back to the, the whole crypto space. Um, what's your future predictions on cryptocurrencies as an alternative paying in fiat? I think we spoke about it or touched on it already in some of the, the previous chats now. Uh, do you think, or what is, what's required to get more businesses adopting this? Um, just continue chipping at the block, uh, keep promoting it, like platforms like Coin Payments get more businesses into it. I mean, that's, that's, what ha- that's, that's what adoption is, right? It's, um, it takes time, it takes education, it takes uh, community consciousness, right? Mm-hmm. So it takes the fact that, you know, here we are all sitting in, 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 in here on the, the conversation and discussing, and through this, we share, and through the, that, the people that learn, they share. And organizations like the PayPal's, honestly, 340 million users around the world that say, hey, at some point, they'll support it in all markets as mm-hmm. regulations come into place, and they will support it, will be more informational, more educational. You know, as much as some people like or dislike the, the whole idea of the Libra Association and the Libra product, it helped by informing people that, hey, there is something else that's that that's out there. Maybe it's been challenged, but maybe it'll still come out. And, you know, more and more systems of people become more familiar with the WhatsApps, for example, becoming yeah. more familiar with digital payments. In in Asia, in Asia, for example, China, WhatsApp is the largest payment method that exists. Yeah, I right? saw that for the first time the other day when I did, used an app on, on WhatsApp where you did your whole order and payment and everything through the yeah. through the WhatsApp channel. And it was that was fascinating to see. I don't yeah. know. So I, I think I think the thing more more e-commerce platforms, the Amazons, the the other organizations that are you know in that sphere that introduce a pay with crypto. You mm. can see it in in the airline industry, for example, where they were starting to support uh, airline tickets being purchased with crypto. And then you went to another place, another place, and it started happening. And now you've got Travala supporting um, Travelocity with the ability to, for anybody who's making a purchase, that you can use crypto. Yeah. So with with more organizations that have mass audience, you bec- you the consciousness becomes more and more. Just like you know how PayPal started, you know, twenty years ago, it wasn't that that long ago? There wasn't everybody was making a payment in PayPal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, uh, and I relate payments back to sort of the ideas of, of the credit card industry. The credit card industry took fifty years to have adoption. It started in nineteen fifty. By two thousand, <laughs> you know, it was pretty common to have a credit card, but not everybody did. And yeah. then back in two thousand, so checkbooks. Yeah, people were still using checkbooks. There were preferences. Some communities didn't that. That was how the only way to accept a payment. You know, except if you were at a restaurant and at yeah. restaurants, at restaurants, not every restaurant had Visa and MasterCard. They just had a Visa sign. Right. That was it took insane. 50 years for that adoption. Now, today, crypto, we're at 10 years. <laughs> right. And we're in this we're in this massive growth stage right now. And in the next 10 years, I don't believe crypto will be an alternative. I think it'll just be an option. An right? option. Different, yes. different being that you have many options to make a payment. Well, you'll be holding crypto and you'll make an option or you'll choose the option to either pay in crypto or mm. pay in your credit facility that you have or pay with your telephone credit. Whatever the option is that you have, all merchants should accept that those types of forms of payments. You go to Sweden right now, you can't even pay in cash. Do you know that? <laughs> no, you sure. go to the you go to the malls. You cannot pay with cash. That's insane. No, it's. I think you've got it spot on there. It's all about options. Um, right in the beginning, we spoke about quick people wants things quick, and I mean we've moved into a society where everything is instant. Um, and although it's going for ten years, the blockchain and the crypto is still a relatively new technology and a relatively new way of doing things. So it will catch up, I'm sure of that. But now back yeah. to coin payments. What can we expect? This I see there's one or two questions um, related to coin payments. And then where's coin payments going in the future? Any chances of bringing out a credit card or a debit card? 
I see um, Binance has started with their loan accounts, also what we spoke about earlier, what banks do. So yeah, yeah. more people are going to start um, borrowing cryptos and then spend it, hoping that the price goes up. I hope it doesn't bite them like Features does. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but right. coin payments, what can we expect in the coming months or years or for from coin payments? Well, definitely, definitely expects. Um various types of uh, card programs. So we will have a, a debit card programs and we'll have uh, a credit card programs. Different, there's various differences with, within those. Mm -hmm. uh, credit card programs being a secured card that, that acts more like a credit card rather than a debit card. Yeah. Uh, but different industries or different markets require slightly different products. Um, as you can see with other suppliers, some people only have it in say the US or certain people only have it in Europe. There's different rules and regulations that have to be followed within the sort of global card issuing uh, industry. So do expect uh, various card programs that are available in different markets and different, mm. different spaces. Um, also expect that we will be providing um, crypto to fiat settlements for merchants and users who have their wallets so that they can convert their, uh, their crypto to fiat and have it settled to their bank account. Oh, so is that coming? That's, that's excellent news. Yeah, that's, oh, that's uh, really it's basically available now, We ha but we were testing it and, and applying a number of different things. Also expect a completely new platform. We uh, have been working on this quite diligently for the last couple of years and an entirely new UAX platform, APIs, systems, uh, including invoice payments and recurring payment things, a number of elements that are going to be coming out in the, in the new year. Um, also, if you look on our LinkedIn page, you'll see a new alien. It's our new, uh, it's our mascot that has been around for a while. His name is Charlie. And uh, you'll see him on uh, LinkedIn. You'll see him everywhere pretty soon, but definitely a piece. It's not necessarily fundamental in the operation of the business, <laughs> yeah. but Charlie is definitely comes from the, from the universe. And, uh, you know, in essence, brought us, uh, brought us coin payments. So there's okay. a lot of... Uh, out of other things and, and there is some other there may be some other very significant news coming out in the new year we'll see how our our conversations and things go in the next little bit but there's definitely lots of growth that are that are happening for sure now i'm looking forward to that because we as you know now um busy speaking to one of your colleagues in implementing it into our business marketplace um and enabling businesses to do the same as what we're doing with a local merchant so I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to that. Now, on the support side, um, using coin payments, there's two hiccups that we find in one of our platforms that we support and promote quite a bit uh, with various crypto, um, crypto products uh, called To Know It. And one of the things that is catching people time in and time out, and the second question actually ties in with this one, is the fees, adding fees to what coin payments is saying you need to pay the merchant or the um, the product owner but not it's it's not very clear reminding the person to add the fee of uh, their so when they don't add it the coin or the payment is kicked back and mm. then you have to go through a whole rigmarole to reclaim your funds um, yeah. and that we find is i would say about 70% of our support calls um, yeah. on this platform and then what happens to those who don't claim what happens to the funds who don't claim their uh, their payments back or if there's some scraps left well it's definitely a question it's it's been um you know we test most of other platforms and it's a, it's actually a common challenge in, in almost any platform that that is out there and this is a part of an education process a part of the the current challenges that we have you know, if an individual has, uh, say, a hardware wallet, or they're saying they're using Coinami, or you know, whatever their their system is, if they don't, um, you know, send their their transaction with the right payment method, or it's low value, again, sometimes those right. transactions can be sitting there for ages, mm -hmm. and by the time it actually gets to the payment method, the transaction itself is is uh, not the right value, and it, it, it's a, it is one of those biggest challenges I think the industry has as, as a whole. Mm -hmm. So when the transaction actually arrives and it en ends up being credited, once the cover 
convert or the um, confirmations have ha have gone through, etc. Often those merchants we're working on a, creating a facility where the merchant has the choice to either accept that payment or not accept that payment. Um, the difficulty, of course, is often those transactions are quite small. If a transaction gets sent back to the individual, yeah. there is now two transaction <laughs> fees that have been paid. It, it's quite challenging. Of course, we support uh, an individual creating an account with us, um, sending their funds into our account. And if in any transaction that happens internally, it happens instantly and there's no, uh, no delays. Therefore, the, the fees and everything else are, are saved quite, quite a lot. Okay. That's no transactional fees and everything else. So there, there is definitely, um, that's one of the answers to solve that problem for sure. Um, of course, it's a process and it, it does require a sign up and, and become an, uh, uh, an account holder. Yeah. For coin payment. But, you know, if you're a PayPal provider and you want to make a payment and you, you want to load funds up and keep it in PayPal and then pay, pay somebody else who accepts PayPal, it's sort of the same way, right? So it does help and does save we ourselves also deal with a lot of the customer support side of things where somebody is uh, expecting a payment, the payment didn't get received. We end up having to trend, you know, check yeah. on that transfer research and find out what happened, where it is, what happened. Um, so it is a, it is a challenge. We end up holding those, those transactions in an, in an escrow account um, in essence, basically have to sit there. So it becomes, a big challenge for us to have to deal with, um, you know, what do those, what do we do with those funds? And at some yeah. point, you know, over the years, they have to, in essence, basically be written off because they, they are the funds that are in essence sitting in an escrow account being held for, uh, for a client um, that is expecting either funds, but we also have methods for every communication, whether it's the person sending the funds who isn't even a client of ours, mm. To the merchant and we provide that customer support which uh, most people don't try and do that with uh, say one of the other current other other providers their customer yeah. supports to support you in that okay so how long do you keep the 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 funds or how long does a person have to reclaim um the refunds well right now in our in our terms of services we we say um within 30 days that we'll will support that claim um but then at the same time in every every manner that we've had, somebody's come back to us and said, "Well, I didn't know about it. I couldn't. I forgot about it. It's been sixty days, ninety days, etc." We always support somebody, and no, no matter which way it comes into. Okay. Uh, I mean, the last time I think I had to deal with something specifically, it was actually six months, right? Sure. So, and and that was a matter of the the merchant and the individual having a conversation at some point. Somehow they. They contacted us. We we can't provide information about a merchant mm -hmm. necessarily because of our confidentiality rules and regulations. But we introduce and we do that that sort of conversation that you have to contact that merchant. That merchant then uh, responded and said, "Correct, this was the transaction. They confirmed it. They confirmed that was the buyer, and uh, we then resolved the, the the issue at that time." So. It just, it all depends on the circumstances for sure. Oh, brilliant. It, it honestly, very, very few people mm. uh, in our space uh, go through the whole process. A lot of those transactions are just, just too small. So in essence, I highly recommend to open your own coin payments account. If you are going to buy from merchants that is coin payments enabled or accepting payments through coin payments, it's rather just have your own user account. It's for free in any case. Um, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, mm. at the same time, I, I think it's an industry thing that we also need to find other methods for payments. They're, they're not methods of payments, but methods of those mistakes and those challenges. Mm. There are some very interesting things that are happening, the pay ID platforms that are creating, you know, the, the distribution and payment systems, reducing some of those potential challenges. I think that's one of those areas that I think we as a group, as a team of people in the, in the industry, need to find solutions around um, around that. Happens in the industry of sending wires, right? Exactly, you send yeah. a wire from bank one to bank two, how many people are in the middle and who knows where the money goes. Sometimes you got to wait months and months to get your money back, but you end up getting it back. But if you send a wire for you know $10,000, hopefully you're on it right away to say, hey, the guy on the other end didn't receive it. If it was a $10 transaction, you know, in the credit card industry, there's 
many, many, many people have $10, $8, $7 transactions they forgot about that are going on for ages and ages and ages. <laughs> so yeah, no, I've, I've seen that happen first then. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think it's, I think it's, uh, as an industry aspect of things, we, we should find ways around that to reduce the, uh, the errors or the challenges within that. And of course, like you mentioned at, be at the beginning, the transaction fees and things of like that, where they adjust and change and go from mm -hmm. one place to another. And even the option of sending normal or high or low per, you need to send a payment, just send the payment. You shouldn't have to pay your different fees for different, different uh, timelines and, and transfer costs. Exactly. All right. So then John, just the last one. Um, I think it's, it's op, uh, not obvious, but when your card is caught or available um, eventually or, or soon, uh, the transaction will happen straight through coin payments. There's no bank interactions unless you are buying cryptos with fiat on uh, coin payments, correct? That's right, yeah. Yeah. All right, so Karen, I see you've got your hand raised. If anybody has got a question for um, Jason, you are welcome to raise your hand. And then, so Karen, you've got your hand Hi. raised. Hi, Jason. Um, just want to know, I do enough payments through coin payments. And if you do any um, Ether-based token, obviously you pay transaction fees. Now, what happens is in the coin payment setup, there's a space that says plus transaction fees, but it doesn't give an indication what the transaction fees are at the spe that specific time. Now, I know other platforms has the option where you can um, adjust your, your fees. And then obviously, if you pay a lower fee, you wait longer for the transaction to be verified. Um, now, my question, that's a statement. And then my question becomes, obviously, at different times, you pay higher, other times lower. But then at that time of the transaction, logic then tells me that I would be paying the highest transaction fee because um, mostly, you know, the payment reflects within five minutes time. But would you guys be open to explore the option of allowing the user in order to manage their fees uh, to choose whether they would wait longer for the, for the transaction to be verified or not. Just, just a question, um, if you for understand sure. what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. So in our new platform that we're expecting to launch in the new year, um, transaction fees and elements will actually be shown within the, the transaction uh, point. So when you're making that transaction, that'll be, uh, that'll be shown. Um, the difficulty that we have on uh, having different rates and different choices on the transaction fees is we are a custodial wallet platform. So our custodial wallet system works off of a number of ways. First, we try to um, batch some of our transactions where we, we facilitate those transactions and we, we can support the transaction happening quickly and immediately. But also because there's a lot of transactions that are happening internally between uh, various user accounts, et cetera, we have within that space, sometimes we don't have any transaction fee. So it, within the process that we have, we um, are adding these functionalities and systems in our new platforms that we're launching. Um, but whether or not we can actually support varying the transaction fee is something that, that I'll bring up to, uh, to my IT team and see if it's something that's possible for us to find a way, if it's not an internal transfer, it's an external transfer. If there's ways for us to mod modify that, um, that fee, it'll be something I'll bring up. I'm writing Jason, it down now to talk. Um, Jason, something like similar, you know, when you use like a normal bank transaction that like you pay with EFT, you have the option of saying, uh, if you want it to reflect immediately, you tick it and then obviously you pay a premium, you know, for, for it to be processed um, faster. E even if you can 
just have the two options. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. you have the general fee at that specific time frame, and then there's an option to, if you want it processed faster, um, you click it and then maybe look at something like having a, a flat rate to have a transaction processed faster. I don't know, just something to think about. Oh, yeah. Good question, um, Corin. Absolutely, Corin. And, and, and I've just written this down as um, something to run by, uh, by my team to explore for sure. Um, if you, I don't know whether you are aware, but you've got um, something gas station, your IT team should know, where you can actually see um, the, the uh, rates for each gas fees. They have got a high rate, medium rate, low rate, where you in time can see how they vary. You know, I'm not saying you guys must implement that specifically, but that may be a starting point to see how they, how they, you know, how they work it out and then see maybe if you can't do it exactly like that, find some, some type of a middle ground. For sure. I, I appreciate the, uh, the suggestions, Karen. I'll, I'll definitely share that with my team and, uh, and explore how we can add that. Brilliant. Thank Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, so just for all the, the to know it and tell a friend members that's on you, I think what, if I sum this up, what we just discussed the last minute or two is open your own coin payments account and maybe we can speak to to know it and get a direct link account so you can transfer from coin payments directly to their coin payments uh, transaction and i think that's what we're going to do on the digital flyer platform as well with the businesses um, opening individual accounts and direct accounts so matthew i see you've got your hand raised Yeah, I did. Um, I was thinking that um, you were mentioning that one of the biggest problems of the fact that people are not calculating fees or adding fees to their uh, their payments, mm -hmm. um, and that's causing a lot of rejections and it creates difficulties. I've experienced that from a consumer side where you want to get something and you want to send 20 bucks, but, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know that you need to add a quarter for the fee. So you just say, okay, I'll send the 20 bucks and then it, it, it bounces back on you. So I think um, having merchants being able to anticipate the fees and include them in the price will improve the efficiency of the system or something like that. I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I know, and I know, I'm sure Jason's going to have a better answer. I know with Gwen Payments, you can go in and add fees. You can put it to a minus two or a minus one or a minus three. Um, yeah. The one thing that I'm not sure of is if the merchant's product's value is $50, for example, and I've added, uh, anticipated that Binance is going to charge an extra $2 or whatever the case is, and you go minus two, minus three on the settings of your product. Um, I don't know, will that allow the transaction then to go through, Jason? Well, I mean, it, it definitely helps because it adjusts the, the, the acceptance rate, mm. um, but it doesn't necessarily solve the problem that you were saying earlier where somebody doesn't, uh, doesn't add the fees or maybe they, the transaction period that they sent didn't actually happen at the time of transaction. You know, they didn't confirm their transaction within you know, a few minutes, you yeah. know, and, and I've had this happen to, to me before where I walk away from my computer, walk away from the transaction, something happens, I get a phone call, whatever, I go through the, and I click the button later, but the value wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't thinking, you know, it was, and it happens. I mean, this, these are transactions, right? So yeah. people, and, and those are the types of things that sometimes do happen, which would be outside of the control of the merchant. Um, but exactly. I do think this is, this is one of those types of things that, that again, as I said earlier, it's an industry thing. Um, but I, I do think that there should be some ways for us as an industry to, to resolve these. Um, you know, first of all, as, as a merchant, uh, there should be the ability for them to accept the transaction, no matter what the value is. Um, whether they decide to deliver the product or service is mm. separate, right? Exactly. Um, and that's and that's personally my my view of it. If I 
send a, a payment of a transaction and only part of that transaction got there, well, I still owe the merchant for that transaction. Where we have challenges is that sometimes people overpay. And if, if somebody's overpaid for that transaction, the merchants received it, the merchant doesn't want to have to send the funds back to the consumer or the buyer. And it may, it may represent such a small amount. It may actually cost them more money to send the, re- the money back. And we've seen some, uh, some challenges within that space as well, oh, where there is, there's been over overpayments consistently. And then they're, they're, they come, they become a, a very big support issue for us. Mm. No, I can have, I can understand that one. Teresa, you've got your hand raised. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I just want a, f- a fun fact. How did you get about the name or Alien Charlie? How how did he come into the picture? <laughs> I saw his little face on your um, on your um, LinkedIn. So yeah, just a fun fact. Well, how did he come to into existence? What's well, his a, lot story? Of, a lot of a lot of different things. Uh, the majority was is that Charlie is used in the traditional way of of communication, right? So we wanted to Charlie to be our communicator, somebody who shares and and tells the story and be that be that person. But our our I guess internal idea is that Charlie came from outer space in the universe to communicate the the opportunity for people to use crypto as a form of payment. And so Charlie was sort of that one of that first name, and he just stuck with uh with our group uh through all the conversations and some people wanted charlie spelt with x and this and everything else and we just it became just pretty clear that charlie was speaking <laughs> with everybody okay good oh we like charlie's face good <laughs> thanks <laughs> all right so that's everything from my side uh jason i don't i don't see any other questions or something like that any last words uh Everybody on here on this call, well, most of them I know, there's a few new people that I don't know of, are crypto traders and crypto enthusiasts. And as we said earlier, we're busy building our business marketplace and I'll be working with your development team going forward. Uh, But any last words for the crypto enthusiasts and a message? Well, I guess from, from my standpoint, there's two things. One is... Uh, Karen, I, I really appreciate your in, your insight and your ideas, and and I'm sure everybody has some. You know, please feel free to reach out to me directly, either through LinkedIn um, or Dwell. You can share my my contact details. I I appreciate the opportunity to help, and I, and I think together as a community, we always support. We have to support each other, and and that's with other organizations we work with, other exchanges, other platforms and services to you know eradicate sort of the fraud and the challenges within the industry mm-hmm. but also to support each other in the ways to learn and educate and provide that information to others so you know ultimately that's what i think the opportunity we have together and that's that's why i'm here brilliant no, i really appreciate that um jason that's awesome stuff so yeah once again thank you very much for joining us thank you very much for making the time available i know you guys are busy and I'm sure I speak for everybody. We're looking forward to further development, especially the debit card or credit card system. There is a huge need for that um, yep. and making the payments easier. And then, yeah, I think together we will definitely start chipping away further on the block of getting businesses open to start accepting. I think once we start getting more businesses taking cryptocurrency as payment for the traditional goods and services and products that they deliver, uh, your authorities and your banks won't really have an ch- um, uh, uh, option to kick against crypto because yeah. masses will start making the regulations. So, yeah, let's see what we can do. So, yeah, thank you very much for that. And for everybody else, if there's no further questions, remember to know it. Next week, we're back to 2 o'clock. Uh, South African time, UTC plus two, and we're going to have another guest speaker and about two guest speakers next week, but more about that later. And we will keep you informed on the telefriend movements and what else is happening in crypto. Thank you, Jason. Have a fantastic one. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we will chat to you soon. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jason and Dewald.